Let me give you a quick orientation to the VI Curve Tracer LabVIEW application. First thing you need to do is put in your measured value for the shunt resistance. And at this point you can vary the applied voltage to the combination of the shunt resistance and your device of interest. You can then read directly the measured voltage across the actual device. So here I've got it set to be as close to 2 volts as I can get it. We can then also see the measured current that flows through the shunt resistor. Again, the blue slider is simply to vary your applied voltage to the combination of your device and the shunt. You need to look at the green and orange indicators for the actual device voltage and device current. You can also dial up a specific value for applied voltage. Or you can go in increments as needed. Or you can even select a specific digit and then use the arrow keys to cause that digit to go up and down. To get a plot, instead of individual points now, enable persistence and then as you vary this applied voltage, you can trace out the voltage current characteristic. You can also do an automatic sweep. In this case, I want the applied voltage to begin at minus 10 and at 10 and then do this in 100 steps or collect 100 samples. So you'll notice that the applied voltage slider is being operated automatically and that gives you a very nice way to trace out the voltage current characteristic. All right, another concept I'd like to mention is you'll notice that the voltage and the current appear to not be changing at all, and that's actually the way it's supposed to work. You only update the output voltage in response to moving that slider. Now with continuous sampling, you'll, you'll ba basically make repeated measurements. And this might be necessary in some cases where you'd like to be able to perhaps adjust the characteristics of the two terminal device and actually see the response uh, and, and not have to be changing the applied voltage slider to see something happen. Now here I'd like to point out that sometimes your uh, sample points might end up only being in a certain sub-range. So in this case, as I sweep my applied input voltage, I'm only getting something between about minus 4 volts up to positive 5 volts. So it's very easy to change the range over which the plot window does its thing.